Now we're going to look at how we can use spreadsheets to quickly and easily calculate the value of an annuity. Now it makes sense when we're working by hand to actually come up with a clever formula by making a pattern and that's what we've already looked at with making our a n formula and using the sum of a geometric series to do that. When we're working with a spreadsheet we can literally work one line at a time. We can find the value at the end of the first time period and then use that value in the next one and because we can have cells referring to other cells we can build these formulae very quickly and easily just by using that fill down um, function. So I'm going to start by just listing the time periods and I'm just going to call them one, two, three. These could be months, weeks, years. At this point it doesn't really matter. Now a quick and easy way to make this list is actually to just select the ones that you've done, go to the bottom right corner and drag that corner down as far as you want it. You can very quickly and easily drag it down a long way and it will just auto fill all of those numbers in for you. Now over on the side here I have my parameters for the question and laying them out like this allows me to change them to do subsequent questions and still quickly and easily calculate my values. So the principle is the amount that is in your account at the start. So let's say for this question, we'll do the same example as we just did with Jessie's superannuation. We'll say that in the beginning she had no money in the account. The annuity is the amount that's paid in. That's the regular instalment. So let's put in $600. The yearly rate was 7.8% and I can literally put it in just like that or I could put it as a decimal. And then the monthly rate, I can even get Excel to calculate it, I'll write equals, now let's refer to the yearly rate and then divide by 12. That way if I'm doing another question and I want to change the yearly rate, that will automatically change the monthly rate for me. So now there's really only three boxes, not four, that I need to change if I'm doing a different question. All right, how do we calculate the value at the end of the first time period? Well, we start with the principal. In this case, that was nothing. So we'd have to put equals, oh, hold on, we need to name our cells over here. Now I've put a name for these and then I've referred to these cells just so that I can see what's what. This cell can have a few names. We could put E2 and this would be E3, E4, E5. And if you want to refer to those same cells all the time, you can call it dollar sign E, dollar sign 2, so that it always refers to that. So that when you drop your box down and fill down, you won't lose the fact that it's always referring to that one. The other thing you can do is actually name the cell. So if I click over here in this E2 cell, you'll see that over here on the side, I don't know if I can make that bigger, I can't really. Over here on the side, up in the corner, if I click on it and get E2, that comes up. I could now name that principal. Now, when you're naming cells, you have to make sure, oops, I've spelled it wrongly. You have to make sure that you don't use any spaces in the name. So I've called it something that's principal, and now that cell there is called principal. Let's do the same with the annuity. So I need to click on the box, go up into that top corner, and we can call it annuity. Enter. And then the yearly rate, we need to use no spaces in the name. So again, going up into the corner, selecting it up there, instead of calling it E4, let's call it year, yearly rate, but with no spaces. And that's in. And for E5, we'll call it monthly rate. Enter. Okay, now all of my parameters are actually named cells. All right, now we want to put in a formula that will calculate the value of our annuity at the end of the first time period. Now, when you're writing a formula, always start with equals. Now, we want to start with whatever's in the count in the beginning. In this example, nothing was in there, but perhaps in another example, there will be something. So I can literally start by thinking what I'm going to want. I'm going to need the principal plus the annuity. That was our first payment. And then I'm going to need to, at the end of that first time period, raise all of that to my monthly rate. So I'm going to use brackets to say I would like the principal, which it knows is this cell, and then I want to add the annuity, whatever is in this cell, close brackets. All right, they're added together. Now, how do we raise them to this rate? Well, we want that whole amount plus the rate, don't we? So we need to multiply by uh, 
let's put in brackets one plus our monthly rate. Monthly rate, which it knows is this one. Now I haven't put 1.0065 for a reason. I want to keep it as one plus the monthly rate so that if the monthly rate changes, this will automatically change. So now I have my formula, the starting amount plus the first instalment, and at the end of the month, I need to raise all that by you know, uh, allowing interest to be accrued by multiplying it by effectively one plus this monthly rate equals. Okay, so that's how much money Jessie has at the end of the first month, $603.90. Now, in the second month, what happens? Well, equals will give us an idea here. We need to start with what we had in this cell. So let's just literally click on that cell. In fact, we'll put brackets first because we want B2, and then we want to put our $600 in, don't we? So let's add the annuity. Now, that puts all of Jessie's money in there for the second month. The amount she started with plus the new $600 instalment. At the end of the month, what happens? We need to multiply it by one plus the monthly rate. All right, and we put that in. Now, this is the only formula we're going to need now because if we click on this formula, it's using B2 as its reference cell. It's building everything off that and it's got a little set of instructions for what to do. So if we now click on the, not click, on the bottom right hand corner here, and just drag this down as far as we want. And we can very quickly and easily drag it a long way. Let's drag it right down to the 63rd month since that's where our numbers stopped. Now we have all of the information we want to find the value of this annuity in any month. Now it makes a lot of sense to click on that whole uh, thing and turn it into dollars and cents. So let's choose currency. Whoops, what's it gone there? Perhaps it needs to, yes, we need to just fiddle with Oh, it just needs to be a bigger column. We have too much money to fit. We need to make it a little bit wider. All right, and now we can easily see the answers. And then we can scroll down to 120 months, which was the question that we just answered, and we can see that 120 time periods, which was actually six years in this example, would be $109,256.94, which is the same answer that we worked out by hand. Now, the value of doing it like this is that you can really clearly and easily see what's happening each time. You can see that we're starting with an amount and we're adding our first instalment. Then we're multiplying by one plus the time period rate each time. And then in the next line, we're just taking what we had in the line before. We're adding our annuity, raising it to the interest rate. Adding our annuity, raising it to the interest rate, on and on and on. But the beauty of doing it like this is that I can say, well, what, if, what would happen if I put in $700 each month instead of $600? Now what would be the difference after 120 time periods? And I can very quickly and easily see, oh, that would give me $127,000 now, so I can straight away see the effect. Now, this is what financial planners can quickly and easily do by just having these boxes ready to fill with different numbers. Let's say the yearly rate has changed and it's now 9.2%, my formula will automatically refer the monthly rate to the yearly rate and change it accordingly and all my numbers just updated. Perhaps we started with some money in our account. Perhaps there was $5,000 in there in the beginning. And if we put that in, all of those, those numbers just got $5,000 bigger. So playing around with a spreadsheet like this so that you can calculate your annuities is really important. And in fact, in all the questions that you do by hand, if you'd like to have an Excel spreadsheet open, have um, these parameters set up, you can put your numbers in and you can check your answers this way.